I'm going to have a sip of water. So here we are back with Christine King talking about the Enneagram and she wants to say some words about the subtypes because the Enneagram has nine types and everyone has subtypes. And so over to you, what you want to say. Well, the, the three labels for the subtypes are self-preservation, social, and sexual. So it's pretty easy, isn't it, to take a quick glance, that's how we evolved. Self-preservation, making sure we have food, making sure we are warm when it's very cold outside, um, figuring out how to get food. Mm -hmm. So the basics of a home, where's my home? Is it a cave or where am I, where am I going to be? So mm -hmm. that self-preservation translated from a very long time ago. Um, social is this recognition that we need each other. We join into community because one person can't always do everything. We all have particular gifts. And so when we're in community, we can access that. Especially if we are coming from a kind place, supporting each other. When we aren't in community from a kind place, we create wars. And that still has a social component to it because it, it's under social, how we relate to others. Mm -hmm. And so the third one, it's sex is easy to identify because if we didn't have that, we wouldn't be having this conversation. <laughs> but I think it's, it's most often taught from the perspective of creativity, the force of creativity, of course, bringing a child into the world, what, what could be more creative than that? Um, but then any other form of creativity, which is look at how we've evolved and we continue to bring our creativity to um, our communities um, and to ourselves, to our own simulation. So in theory, most of the teaching about the, the subtypes, we find that usually there's one that seems to be kind of dominant that most affects my personality. And then there's another one that, you know, that affects me, but it's not driving me in a strong way. And the other one you say, huh, what's that? <laughs> Huh? I don't get that. They call that a blind spot. The interesting thing that has evolved just in the time since I've been um, teaching the Enneagram is that more and more people are saying that the, the instincts are maybe even more important to relate to than the Ennean number. There's so much power in the instincts because it's subconscious mm -hmm. and our shadow very often is in one of these instinctual pa patterns. It's just driving our behavior that we do not see. So that's fascinating. So, I mean, Russ Hudson, I still consider him to be a teacher of mine, says very boldly, they're more powerful than what happens when you identify your number. When you can see what you're doing in each of those subconscious instincts. Mm -hmm. okay. and yeah, so, yeah. So what you're saying is, for instance, uh, self-preservative four has uh, more to do with a self-preservative six, let's say, or seven, than with a sexual four. Each, each one, this, this self-preservation six is going to behave very differently than the self-preservation four. Mm-hmm. Each one completely different. They each have their own flavor. So I'll give okay. you an example. Would you like an example of that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I actually did a video to communicate this to people. I suppose I could send that to you at some point in time. I had I worked with an actress and coached her mm -hmm. in capturing the energy of each of them. Right. So what I'm doing now is sort of reading from um, what her copy, right? What she was, what she was saying. Um, okay, so self-preservation four. 
Mm -hmm. A few bullet points. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a whole book that's written about this. Oh, okay. Beatrice Chestnut called The Complete Enneagram. It is just about subtypes. Okay. Self preservation four. I've suffered and have learned to endure. I'm stoic and strong. Not at all dramatic, and rarely do I complain. Rarely do I complain. Mm -hmm. I work hard, sometimes too much. I'm empathic. Some people view me as a humanitarian. Hmm. I don't appreciate my own strengths. It's kind of touching, isn't it? It's deep. Yeah, and that's exactly what is describing me. Yeah, I had that feeling. I was, as, as I was reading that, I had that feeling. And rather than going on to, would you like me to go to the social four and the sexual Yeah, let's four? see. Let's see what I feel with this. Right, and switch to six. Mm -hmm. Okay. The social four. And it's quite different. Mm -hmm. I'm full of shame. You don't suffer like I do. I feel inferior to you. I envy you. I can't express my needs. My changing emotions exhaust you. You call me a victim. Uh. I may be overly dramatic and my suffering reveals my depth and complexity. Quite different. That doesn't fit with me at all. <laughs> <laughs> the sexual form. Mm -hmm. I'm competitive and want to be the best. I love my intensity. My needs must be met. When you don't meet my needs, I blame you. My arrogance, anger, and criticisms are difficult for you. You don't understand me. I feel superior, but I also feel inferior. I don't know how to get along with other people. I don't know how to get along with other people. There were some two or three moments where I said, thought that could fit with me, but all the rest didn't. So, no. So if we were working together and exploring this in more depth, we would certainly say, well, it looks like self-preservation is your strong place. Yeah, but then we would just dive much more deeply than that and say, what is, what is the shadow of your self-preservation? And are there some strengths in the social or some strengths in the sexual that you might access? Ah, and that makes me ask, uh, is, it, is it available, the other subtypes, in some way? To oh, yeah, absolutely. Ah, okay. Absolutely. The, the way I'm presenting it is I present it with the shadow. Mm-hmm so that we can guess which one is dominant mm -hmm. and then look at the others from not not to look for the shadow but to look what would balance look like a sexual balance what would creativity balance look like what would social balance look like and russ hudson is now teaching that very new work um they call it the zones and try to see the zones of each one so what would bring what would be the zones for the four that would help you bring more balance into your life? Mm -hmm. The zones of the creativity, the social, and the um, self-preservation. So it's a it's a big dive. It's interesting. It's it's quite different from how I used to to know the enneagram. You know, I I knew the subtypes, but we mm, didn't really go too deep into it so yeah well i think that's was my experience too as recent as 15 years ago mm -hmm. 
in reading it and studying it at the Institute, I went, eh, you know, this isn't doing too much for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I think self-pres was my lowest, but so what? I don't know how to turn, I don't know how to turn that into growth. But that's where we are with it now. We're using the subtypes, the subconscious components of it to grow. And it's super duper. I mean, I'm getting huge insights with clients who are like, for example, self-preservation is a very big issue for us these days. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. How do we, how do we, how do we survive this? Yeah. And there's a direct connection between our, between the subtype of self-preservation and the kinds of decisions we make. Has it also to do then that you can access the creativity? Yeah. In self? yeah. Because when the self-preservation becomes more urgent, you have to find out how to self-preserve, yeah. you know? And, and that, that's where some of Russ's work has really helped. I did a very long, t- from a colleague of Russ's in, in Denmark, we did almost like a six month study of of the zones for each one of them. And Mm -hmm. what we usually do is start making sure we're balanced because sometimes by having, by seeing ourselves as a self-pres, we may be too much that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so then how do we let that calm down? And those are in some of the zones that Russ has identified. Mm -hmm. It's not in any, it's not in any books yet, or it's not, it's not, it's not like information. I can't send you a website that would talk about the zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I find it very interesting because looking in my history, the self-preservation has always been very, very strong. And sometimes it became almost like dogmatic, almost, you know, like, like frozen, uh, you know, like uh, habits which have to be like this. And on the other side, I realized that it has trained me in real moments of self-preservation to, to, to know that's important. And then with having access to some creativity, find ways, new mm-hmm. ways, you know, and this has to do, in my opinion, with the growing up. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. Because yeah. before you are fixed in this and nothing else, and then growing up, you become more creative and more inventive. Going up the levels. Yeah, yeah. Getting, going towards essence. Mm-hmm. You, you definitely, that's a beautiful way to describe it. You need to access your creativity. Mm-hmm. And it's very important just now in this strange, crazy world we are. We, we, you know, the, the last thing that, I mean, I feel deeply strongly that we need to take care of ourselves so the people who are around us who are in trouble won't we won't allow ourselves to go down our levels when we are around them. So it takes a lot of strength mm-hmm. and focus of boundaries and self-awareness to not be pulled down exactly by others, but to instead try to help them rise up. Yeah, that's the task. I think uh, the people who are more aware and more conscious have to take on in these times. And, and that's... This, the gift of the Enneagram, because if people are feeling disconnected and go to see a, what, because my doctorate is in counseling and psychology, to go to see a psychologist, it's hard to have the specificness that relates to one person. You know, they've got a, most, most people who work in this field have a model mm. that they hope will work for all their clients. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Um, but the Enneagram is something you can work on with yourself. You don't need a therapist. You just need to get your number right. <laughs> After, yeah. And right? then de- dedicate yourself and go into the, uh, yeah. into the perspective of seeing yourself from, from, from these viewpoints. No? And then have friends or family members or colleagues who also are curious and you can laugh together about what we do, you know, yeah, it's just, mm-hmm. that's, I mean, one of my definitions of being fully present, which is what this is all about. I mean, the Enneagram came into being as a vehicle to come 
to our essence to be present, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that when we laugh spontaneously, we absolutely are present. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it does. It, but that, but two or more gathered is it's kind of it's kind of you can laugh at yourself, but it's more fun <laughs> with others. <laughs> As it is fun with you talking to you. So for uh, closing a little bit on these sub times, can you repeat uh, in case the others, the people haven't seen the other recording, can you repeat your websites and uh, the, your email so that uh, they can contact you? Sure, my the website uh, I goes into the details about the book, Choosing Compassion, the Enneagram's Nine Pathways. So it's... Um, choosingcompassion.org and you can reach me through the website but best just to go directly to my email which is c the letter c king k-i-n-g at barry b-a-r-r-y dot e-d-u keep in Very mind good. keep in mind in terms of if you do communicate with me i am on Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if I don't if I don't respond instantly, it might be because we're in different time zones. Yeah, and also sometimes we all need to keep away from the computer for a day or two, because yeah. otherwise it's too much. Anyway, grateful for this technology, grateful of having known you, got to know you, and having talked to you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. It's been a, it's a joy. I'm grateful for Zoom in this moment. Yes, me too. Thank you. <laughs>